you're very welcome to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. A, speci- a very special episode this week because for the first time ever we are coming live from a Camogie club. I'm delighted to be here in the beautiful Holy Cross by Holy Cross Ballycal Camogie Club. And we're going to chat to a couple of different people and get a real flavour for the club here. A real thriving progressive club here in the heart of Mid Tipperary. And first up chat to is Catherine Shannon. Catherine is chairperson of the club. Catherine, it's delighted to be here. A real hive of activity here tonight. I say it's like this every Thursday, is it? Uh, yeah, you're very welcome to come down here to, to Holy Cross um, pitch. Um, you've picked a great evening. Thursday is our evening for our juvenile training. So our okay. under sixes and eights are in the AstroTurf. And our under tens then are just there behind you. So it's a hive of activity, loads of laughing and great fun. Brilliant. Yeah. And Catherine, I know you played back in the day. Um, how long is Holy Cross Valley Cal Camoy Club in existence? So it was established in 1985. So we'll be celebrating our 40th anniversary in 2025. Very good. Um, yeah, so we've just grown, gone from strength to strength since then. Brilliant. And I suppose it's, we can't really be standing here in, in Holy Cross without talking about the facilities. Um, you know, you have, just explain to, I suppose, to people maybe not aware what kind of facilities we have here. I know Kevin is getting some footage as well. Yeah, so we're just really, really blessed um, for the facilities that are here in Holy Cross. Um, we have the John Dial Centre, and within the John Dial Centre you have a uh, wall ball, and there's a meeting room, um, there's a gym and another room upstairs then um, as well. And we can't forget the AstroTurf. That is absolutely amazing, yeah. especially when you have younger players. It's great to put the younger players in there, the under sixes and the under eights, and you know that they're safe. And then we also have the, the backfield. Can't forget Ballycal either. Yeah. Um, lots of work has been taking place in Ballycal. Um, we've got a new kitchen and some new dugouts and a walkway there as well. Brilliant. So it's it's amazing. The facilities yeah. are absolutely brilliant and, and we're just really, really blessed. I'm sure it all helps from your side organising and whatnot. Exactly, exactly. No, it's yeah. great. And how many, tell us about the teams now. How many teams have you in Holy Cross Ballycal well, this year? Well, we're really lucky. We have all together within the club, there's 200 members which is brilliant. amazing, yeah, it's absolutely Fantastic, brilliant. Yeah. So we have under sixes and eights, we have an under 10 team, we have two under 12 teams, we have two under 14 teams, we have an under 16 team. Um, tonight then our under 21s are in a semi-final over in Canolte and we have two adult teams, Junior A and Junior B2. Brilliant, so loads of teams and obviously that needs loads of help with I know there's lots of coaches and mentors but also I suppose from your side you know um your chairperson of the club I know Trisha Dwyer is really busy as secretary of the club as well I know she can't be here today she's gone with the under 21s I think it's your 14s she, is it? She's gone with the under 14s so the under 14s are in Dr Myers Park this evening with for the um, under 14 community games against my Carkey Burris so unfortunately she couldn't be here this evening but Trisha without Trisha you know, we'd all be just spinning our heads wondering where we're supposed to be. She's yeah. absolutely amazing. So I suppose the secretary, well. she's looks after really the day-to-day running of the club. Yeah, so the day-to-day running of the club, the fixtures, getting the refs, etc. Um, Trisha is the lady for that, so she is, yeah. And then you mentioned Pauline, she's the treasurer, isn't it? Yeah, so Pauline's the treasurer as well, and Paula, Pauline also then helps out with the under-14s, as does Trisha. Um, they both have two daughters who are under-14s. And... Um, Trisha's daughter then Sinead she also helps out with the under sixes so it's absolutely amazing to have some underage girls coming to help out with the juveniles it's it's great it's brilliant to see very good yeah okay we're going to pause the chatting for a minute and we're going to get some let's check out some of the action here on
already mentioned all the teams that are um, are competing here in Holy Cross. Um, obviously, all that costs money as well, running teams and and resources and, and whatnot facilities. And um, I suppose for the club itself, I know you had a walk on there recently, wasn't it, for a fundraiser? Yeah, last year um, and this year we collaborated with the ladies football, and we came together to to do a giant fundraiser. Now we we've been overwhelmed with the support. Um, our parish is absolutely amazing when it comes to supporting the clubs. Um, they just come out in force just to, to support us the whole time and we're just so grateful for their support. Um, so we did the virtual walk on last year and we decided then again to do it this year. Okay. So this year we did it um, the Easter Bank holiday weekend and last year then we did it on St Patrick's Day and it was amazing. It was and so, why is so it that people go for a walk themselves and donate then, is it? Or? Yeah, so there, there was a GoFundMe page and there also was um, sponsorship cards. Okay. And we also, um, we asked people who were doing the walk, do the sponsored walk, just to take a photograph. Yeah. And then we would put it on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. um, just as a way for us to say thanks a million for supporting yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. So it was really, really good. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, really Brilliant. good. Very good. And I suppose, um, we have to mention as well a big festival coming up cut loose uh, country music festival it's you know it's it's renowned here now in holy cross and it's brilliant that it's back again this year i've been many times myself um so it's happening here on the 31st of july in the main pitch here so if anyone doesn't know us you want to tell us a bit about it yeah so it's the cut loose festival so for the last two years with COVID, um unfortunately the ga weren't able to to hold it so this year now it's back um, bigger and better than ever so it is yeah. um, with brilliant musicians and acts and it promises to be an absolutely amazing day for the whole family and for the details then you can go online onto um, the Cut Loose Facebook page you get all the information there and links to buying your tickets as well so and it's very reasonable it's 25 euros and it promises to be an amazing day yeah look very reasonable because I'm looking at it here half 12 to 7 o'clock for 25 euro and it's a great family day out so it's a great day for the youngsters yeah. the teenagers for I've been here with newborns and a little uh, picnic blanket on the ground it's fabulous it's, it's a ideal. really lovely day out we have Nathan Carter Michael English Jimmy Buckley to name just a few and um, that's a fundraiser really to help pay back a suppose all the development that has gone on here yeah that's it yeah that's exactly what it is yeah um it is to to pay back for the development of the of the facilities here in holy cross yeah, yeah. So that's happened a couple of weeks time so make sure to get online and and book your tickets because uh it's a really popular day yeah. out and you know you don't want to miss out on that so that's the cut loose country music festival here in holy cross on sunday 31st july so a couple of weeks time um actually as well i just want to mention i suppose as an outsider looking in really impressive um social media you know promoting your club here um on instagram and facebook and twitter it's very easy to see what's going on and i suppose all that helps to get people involved and by keeping them up to date and telling them where to go and what's on and what's happening totally Geraldine. yeah um so anna our pro and myself we sort of like um we had to sit down and we just wanted to see what did we want to do to to push push the club forward in terms of publicity um, and positive reinforcement for our players so we launched our Instagram account and we realized very quickly that younger players tend to be on Instagram rather than on Facebook so we have a lot of players who are underage and they they follow us on Instagram and it's a great way for us to advertise all of the games that are taking part. So whether our under sixes have a little blitz, we'll advertise it um, right up to all of our players, um, up to the adults, etc. We always make sure that we, we advertise it and then we'll have a little report then afterwards just to see how everybody got on. Yeah. And it's a great way for us to actually show how well the club is going and also just to give everybody a bit of news as yeah. to how everything is going yeah so it's been it's been brilliant yeah and i know that's i suppose that's coincided last year 2021 you had a really good year on the field as well you you won a good few uh, championships and different things didn't you yeah 2021 was an amazing year for us um our under 12 a and b won the county final our under 14 b won the under 14 d county final um, our under 14A were in a county final and they were just pipped to the post. Yeah. Under 15 development team, they won a county final and our under 16s won a county final as well. So Brilliant. it was absolutely 
amazing. We were just so, so proud of the girls and the coaches because the effort that they put in was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And it really, um, it really showed with, with, the, with the results. Fantastic. Yeah, really and I know good. this year already reached a few semi-finals and, and I know your junior A team then were reached the league final, were beating the league final this year. Wasn't yeah, it? They, they got to the league final um, against um, Borlan. No, kill, sorry, kill, yeah. kill a Dangan, yeah, kill a Dangan, yeah. Yeah, and last year then, your junior A's were beaten in the county semi-final by Borland, who went on to win the county final. So, I suppose the junior A team, the adult team, um, do you know, I suppose it's probably a mixture of older and younger players, um, really competitive at junior A, and I'm sure would love to win that, win that championship this year. Definitely, definitely, that's what they would like, they would love to do. And we're very lucky then as well with the numbers there. Um, so, uh, we've actually got a junior B2 team as well. And it's great to have a mixture of the established adult team then with the, the younger players who are coming up who have finished under 16 and moved up. It's just amazing to see the girls gel so well together and just to be so accommodating for the new players who are coming up. It's absolutely amazing to see them, that they fit in so so well. It's yeah. brilliant. It's brilliant. Really, really good. I suppose it's great to see, you know, I've witnessed here firsthand the numbers you have at under sixes, under eights, under tens, but then to also have two adult teams, it's fantastic, you know, yeah. real testament to the club and to everyone involved. Um, just for those who are interested, I suppose, the FBD Insurance uh, Club Championships happening, obviously, it's only weeks away at this stage. Um, sometime in August, it'll be all kicking off. Uh, Holy Cross Junior A, they're in a group there with Drummond Inch, the Drum Inch second team, Templemore, who won the Junior B a couple of years ago, St. Rachel's Feathered, and Money Gall. Money Gall lost the Junior A county final last year to Borland Dwella. So it's a hot group, Catherine. It's a tough group, and um, you know, but. Holy Cross, great chance there again this year. And, you know, players like Claire Stakelam, um, Siobhan Ryan is still playing, Mags Fannin, some of the younger players coming up along as well. So, you know, there, there's there's no easy game in, in, in that round, but Holy Cross will fancy their chances too of getting out of the group. Exactly. With every game that we go out to play, we're going to give it our all. So, um, can't wait for it to get started. Yeah. Brilliant. And we're looking forward to following Holy Cross, all their teams up along uh, this year. Uh, it's been fantastic to be here in the club and uh, so far and we're going to get around now and chat to a few more people in the club. Thanks very much Catherine. Okay Thanks, sure. now, I'm joined by three superstars of Holy Cross Valley Kalkamogi Club with three of our under 16 teams. So what's your name? Zara. Zara. Rebecca. Rebecca. Sienna. Now I'm told two of you are sisters, so which two are sisters? These two. These two, okay. And then, who's your best friend? Rebecca. Oh, okay. And what school do you all go to? Ballycow. And what class are you in? Seniors. Seniors. Juniors. Very good. And have you got your holidays yet? No. no. You're still going to school? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And when are you getting your holidays? We only, nah, get, nah. We only get them on Friday and, and then the, tomorrow is our last day of school. So tomorrow is your last day of school? Yeah! And did you do a school tour yet? Yeah, yeah. And where did you go? To Paris and Green. Oh, lovely. And to like... Templemore Park. Templemore Park. Oh, very good. Okay, now, what's going on here tonight? There's loads of people training. What's happening? Do you know what's happening? Is it training or a match or what's happening? Training. So it's under six training? Yes. And who are the coaches? Who's the under six coaches? Do you know who the under six coaches? Sienna, do you know who the under six coaches are? Cloda. Cloda. And anyone else? I know. Well, well who Catherine, else? Catherine. Maeve. Maeve. And Catherine. Catherine. And are they nice coaches? Yeah. Or are they cross sometimes? No. Did they ever give out to you? No. Never? No. no. Did they make you say that? No. no. So they're really nice coaches? Yeah. And do you love Komogi Tren? Yeah. So, okay, what's your favourite thing to do at Komogi Tren? What kind of skill? Do you like the running or do you like hitting the ball or what do you like? like? I like hitting the tyres. Oh yeah, what's your favourite thing? Mine is scoring the ball in the goal. Oh, brilliant. And what's your favourite thing? Running. Running? And do you do, um, I think I saw some ladders and hurdles. What's that about? We jump in. We just jump in the thing and we just jump, jump, jump. <laughs> and, like and why do you do that for? It makes you real really fast, does it? Maybe, I don't know. Oh. And come here, have you played any matches lately? Yeah. yeah. Who have you played? Um, Blitzes. Did I think I was in the rag last Thursday? Were you? some of you in the rag last Thursday? Playing Drum and Inch? I wasn't. Were you there, Sian? I think you, I'm from Drum and Inch.
Inch. I think I saw you score a goal against Roman Inch. I don't know. Did I? I don't know. Yeah, no, she didn't. What? Santa, you did? Santa, we weren't there. Oh, maybe you weren't there that week, were you? A different week. Maybe that was under eights, actually. You're on. Why are you under sixes? sixes. So, do you have blitzes or matches? Matches. Yes. Matches, do you? Friendly yeah. matches for other teams? Yeah. Oh, very good. And do you like playing in. Anyone here like playing in the goals? Me. Do you? Yeah. Me. And you? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, what about. Who is your favourite Komogi player? I'm going to ask all of you who your favourite Komogi player is, okay? So, who's your favourite Komogi player? Don't know. Can you think of anyone? Is there anyone? Cloda. Cloda. Is she your favourite? Is she your coach as well? Yeah. Very good. And does she play a Holy Cross? Yeah. And what about you? Who's your favourite Komogi player? Maeve. Maeve. Maeve yeah. Ryan, is it? Yes. Yeah. And Maeve plays a Holy Cross? Yeah. And I think she plays with Tipperary Miners too, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. And is she your cousin? Yeah. Brilliant. And what about you, Sienna? Who's your favourite player? Catherine. Catherine is your favourite player? <laughs> Catherine Shannon, the chairperson at the club? <laughs> Does she still play Komogi? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen her play Komogi. Damn, is she, is she holding across a secret weapon this year for the Junior Championship? <laughs> is she? I don't know. <laughs> well, I think the secret is out now. Catching Shannon is coming back playing Komogi with Holy Cross Ballyka Komogi Club. Sienna is after telling us, so that's something to look forward to this year, isn't it? <laughs> now, and else to tell me about what's your secret to all your right good Komogi players in Holy Cross? What's the secret? Wow. Eating your dinner, is it? <laughs> <laughs> or all the training, or the good coaches? What is it? The good coaches. Is it? That's the secret. Good coaches. Very good. Okay, girls, you're absolutely brilliant. Thanks a million for chatting to us. Give us a big thumbs up to the camera. Woohoo! Okay, next up I'm joined by Bridget O'Reilly. Bridget, um, you were one of, I suppose, the earliest, earlier players in the club. Um, do you know, back when it was originally founded, you are one of the younger players that played under 12. So was your great memories of playing Camogie with the Holy Cross Belly Cat? Yeah, um, we had a great old time. I played with Catherine. Myself and Catherine were one of the members of the full back line, along with Fiona Gleeson and... Sometimes I'm not sure it was always hurling we played. We were meant to be hatchet women, <laughs> but there was um, there was brilliant uh, there was brilliant enthusiasm from the women that were there at the time. And Fogarty, uh, Helen Ryan, Betty Flanagan, Peggy Shanahan, Anne O'Brien, um, and you know at that time they hadn't huge support, but they were great women to keep it going. Um, I often remember going off in the back of Helen Ryan's car. There could be four or five of us thrown into the car to get to a match. You know when, you know. Parents might have been busy farming or whatever, but they were brilliant to keep the club going. And from there, then it just built up. And did you play all the way up along to adult um, level? Or? Well, when we were playing, yeah, there was no under six training when we were playing. It was more under 12. So we kind of played under 12 to under 18 until we went to college. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, like, um, you can just see the skill level is so different. You know, from an early age, they're coming down here at under six level and there's such a focus on, you know, teaching the skills and the stick work and children probably have longer to practice and get more proficient in the skills yeah. of the game. So it's And it's brilliant if blitzes at under eights and yeah. under tens, which wouldn't have been, I suppose, when we were playing. You yeah, know? and they're non-competitive too. So, uh, you know, that suits some children as well. The pressure isn't on. So it doesn't matter yeah. really about the scores once they all get a chance to play. That's the biggest part, I think, to keep them, keep them with it because some of them take longer to 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 really show their skills. And I know you're helping out with the under tens this year. You have a daughter, Emer, playing, and then your older daughter, Aoife, um You were commenting earlier. You know, she's finished with the under sixteen. She's moved up, I suppose, to adult level, and you were really impressed with, with you know how she's got on since she's joined up with the adult teams. Yeah, I suppose with the adult teams, um, there's there's again great support, um, like Tom Dwyer. Eamon, Alan Joyce, uh, Phil Kell, Declan, Declan Carr and Noel Ryan to name but a few and um, Seamus Heaney as well. So all of them, there's a huge um, team that put in huge work to train them and again they have two teams there so it means that all the girls get a match and it again it just keeps on bringing on their confidence. They actually probably get more enjoyment out of it. Yeah. You know, they know they'll get a game no matter what. Yeah, um, and it's so great that Tipperary County Board and uh, first time ever had an under 21 competition. Yes. I know Holy Cross are in that. I know you've a, a county semi-final tonight that yes. you're rushing to get to. Um, yeah. But that's another for age group for the likes of Aoife and her friends to yes. play. Yes, yeah, it's brilliant. And it is very competitive. You know, it, it just keeps the girls in sport, which is really important yeah. because if the, if the competitions aren't there, they tend to wean off quicker, I think, than the boys. Yeah. Um, so best to look to the Phil Kell and all the crew tonight. 
um, and hopefully that they'll they'll be successful tonight. By the time this goes out, you might have played a final <laughs> since, who knows. Um, yeah. What you call as well, I suppose this year as well, I know you entered two junior teams yes. in the league. So you have uh, your normal junior A, but I think, was this your first time entering a second junior team, a junior B too, yes. I think? yeah. And that has proved very good as well. And it just shows, I suppose, the strength of the club that they're feeling two adult teams now, as well as huge numbers at underage. Yeah, and I suppose it for even for the young girls coming on, um, you know they, they can see the older girls some of them will, will have sisters on the older teams and they can see that there's a pathway for them that they can keep on going right into adulthood like on some of those junior teams we have women playing that are in their 30s and 40s and still have a huge level of fitness which is yeah. really inspirational for the the younger teenagers and the you know the under 20s that to see you can still stay playing the sport you know that yeah. there's a there's a platform there to keep continuing on with yeah. it I suppose you're a former player, you know, now you're a parent, you know, how important for, was it for you to have, you know, to see your daughters playing or how do you think it's, it's important for them to stay playing, you know, whatever sport it is? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think sport, first of all, is for, for your own mental health, to keep you fit and to, to give you an outlet to be outside and get away yeah. from the screens and, you know, and, and to be with your friends. And again, in the local area, that's where you, you hang around with most of your, most of your pals and, you know, oftentimes the best play dates arrive from, uh, you know, after a game, someone will go back to the ice cream shop or whatever. And, yeah. you know, so I think it's really important for any child to keep into sports, whatever. So it's great to see for the girls, there is such a selection of sports and one complements the other. Like we have a football team as well. Um, the we have uh, ladies Gaelic football and we have t uh, teams from under eights up. And um, again, they just complement each other. When you have the younger girls, sometimes handling the bigger ball is easier for them. Yeah. But then they get used to tackling and then they're not afraid to tackle when it comes to being on the camogie pitch. Brilliant. So yeah, it's I think really it works well, yeah. works well all yeah. around. Um, and I suppose all that, those teams, the success, the numbers, training, I suppose that couldn't happen without the fantastic facilities here. And I think, you know, I think I was talking to Catherine, it's, it's the envy of, I suppose, nearly every club in, in the county, the facilities yeah. here. And how much does that benefit, training different, organising training sessions, having matches? It, it's a huge benefit, but I think the success of the club is much more reflective of the community spirit in Holy Cross and Ballycal. There's just a really brilliant spirit. And whenever there's anything to be done, everybody kind of puts their shoulder to the wheel. You know, like even with different fundraising events, everybody just you know, gives a bit and that's the difference. It's same with if you look at the trainers here this evening, everybody comes down and gives a bit. If somebody's going to, if, if they're caught for their, their older child going to a match, somebody else will step yeah. in. And I think that has has led to, you know, uh, the the facilities we have here. Plus we have some really good people that have had great vision back years ago to actually, you know, put into development pieces when maybe it was less expensive. Yeah. and they, d they had a great um, vision to develop the club. So again, we've been blessed with the people that have surrounded us. Brilliant. Bridget, thanks very much. No After getting a real flavour uh, for the club here, thanks to Bridget as a parent and as well an underage uh, coach and a former player as well. Bridget, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm joined by Liam McCullough. Uh, he's one of the coaches with the under-8 Camogie team. Liam, it's a buzz of activity here this evening. Who, who are we training out in the AstroTurf? Um, this evening, every, every Thursday evening, we have the under-6s on the bottom half of the AstroTurf and the under-8s here on the top half. So. And then I think the pitch here beside me, there's And under the under-10s are out there. Yeah, yeah so under it's brilliant to see it all happening. Um, you were involved in under eights. Uh, are you involved with them long or how did you get involved? Um, I suppose this year my daughter um, has moved up to the eights this year. Uh, so I helped out. Frankie McGrath is doing most of the organising there. So I helped out this year and last year I was with the sixes with Catherine there. was running the show yeah. with the under sixes last year. Um, so we were helping out there as well. So it's easy to come down and do your bit when you know, there's such good organisers here have everything set up for us. And is it once a week you train? And yeah, we train towards evenings. Every towards evening we're here. And then we might have... Depending on who we're playing against, we might have a game against another team like Drum one evening, we played Schlieffail, and but yeah. most of the time they'll be on tours even, but sometimes, you know, if needs arise, we might play on a Saturday. Yeah, and then I know there's different blitzes run different times, different clubs and the county blitzes stuff. Do the kids enjoy them? Or oh, they love them, sure. that's, that's what it's all about. They'll come yeah. down here on a Thursday and they'll like that, but they'll, it's, it's all about going to the blitzes. We were at the county blitz um, down in Ballyluby already and we've had our own blitzes. We had one in Ballycal and um, we were in Cashel there recently as well. So yeah, very that's good. And what kind of numbers have you at under eights? Uh, we're very good now. We have um, 24, 25 on the group altogether. So most evenings we'd have 20 down here. 
Brilliant. It's just, it makes it a lot easier when you have good numbers like that. It makes it a lot easier to go through the activities and the yeah. drills and the games. And what would you say, if you talk to other people, would you encourage them getting involved under eights? Or? Oh, certainly. It's, it's probably they're the most enjoyable ages. Like the under sixes, it's just for the fun of it. It's for the enjoyment. The, yeah. The enthusiasm, they're mad to come down. And the under eights as well, carrying it on this year. And I see as well, so many of the under tens are out there. Like they're, they're the best years to be involved because you're just down for the fun, the enjoyment. Yeah. For the blitzes, it's winning is great but it's partaking is what it's all about and they, all the girls are happy just to get out and play they want to play in goals they want to play forwards they want to keep moving around the field yeah. as much as possible which you probably don't get those opportunities maybe when you move up through the years when you're up at the older ages sometimes the positions are more set yeah yeah and i suppose they're meeting their friends and having fun and they're chatting that's it yeah it's friends yeah because they're coming from all sides of the parish here like we have the holy cross girls and the Ballycal girls so they're coming over here and as I said we played our blitz in Ballycal earlier so it's yeah it's a great chance for all the girls in the parish to come down and meet and mix with their friends. Brilliant and just what a typical training session now for under eights is it I see you have stations set up there. Yeah as I said Frankie Frankie McGrath does a huge amount of the organising so we come down here generally he has the station set up and at the start uh, it's all about the fundamental movements the the, the ladders are out the hurdles are out the, we're running twisting turning all that and then they'll take their break and after that, then there's some drills set up for your your basics again of the striking, getting comfortable holding the hurley, blocking, um, batting the ball, all those. And then again, they'll have another water break and then they'll play their fun games, their mini games at the end. Brilliant. So Perfect. Great stuff. So. Thanks very much, Dean. No problem. It's been a brilliant evening here in Holy Cross Valley Cal Camogie Club. Uh, we're after meeting some wonderful people here involved in the club and, and met some future stars. And um, we hope you enjoyed the podcast and we'll see you again soon.